Hello, dear colleagues. Uh, this is uh, Assistant Professor Faiz Al Hadani, uh, the Vice Dean in the College of Dentistry, Ibn Sina University of Medical and Pharmaceutical Sciences. First, I would like to thank uh, Dio Implant Company for giving me this opportunity to speak about uh, my research uh, with a few of my colleagues that I have uh, conducted recently. Uh, my passion about dental implant uh, goes back to the late 90s, but in the last couple of years, I became more interested in the research aspect of dental implantology. That's why I am giving this lecture, and you'll find it uh, a bit different from what you may expect from webinar or usual webinar lectures. Uh, my presentation will be about the influence of thread design and uh, on the uh, citrus distribution uh, over the bone around the dental implant. To begin with, the structure of the dental implant is uh, very important in terms of uh, long-term success. And this is because uh, optimizes the function of the implant supported processes. It uh, helps to reduce the citrus over the bone around the dental implant. It improves the osseointegration, integration and by its improvements to the uh, osseointegration, integration, it will reduce the time required for dental implant loading. One of the main areas in dental implant research, especially in the last decade, was the thread design and its influence on citrus distribution. The thread is the outward extension from the body of the dental implant. And uh, the dental implant threads improves the initial bone implant contact uh, hence, it uh, improves the primary stability of the dental implant. Also, it maximizes the surface area of the dental implant, and this has a positive effect on the osseointegration. integration. There are four basic thread designs. As you may see in the figure, in the top left figure, we have four basic designs. The figure A represents the V-shaped design. Uh, figure B represents the buttress design in which the face of the uh, thread or the slope of the thread is facing upwards. And the reverse buttress design, which is figure C, in which the slope of the thread, face of the thread is facing downwards. And finally, figure D, which represents the square thread design. More recently, especially in the, from 2012 onwards, more and more studies have found that square design has the advantage over other designs in terms of citrus distribution. This is why more than one dental implant company, or there are several implant, implant, dental implant companies, actually are using this shape of dental implant thread in their uh, structure, and the structure they adopt for dental implants. These are two examples, from one from a French, company and the other from a German dental implant company. It's important to know some of the terms that has been, have been used uh, frequently in studies related to dental implant structure. And in relation to the figure on the left, we'll start from the bottom. We have the term which is the outer diameter of the dental implant, which represents the implant, including the thread, 
and we have the inner implant diameter, which includes only the body of the dental implant. We have the thread width, and we have the thread depth. And what we mean by thread depth is the length of the thread, or the distance between the tip of the thread and the body of the dental implant. We have also the pitch, which is the distance between two adjacent dental implant threads. And finally, there is a very useful term, which is the face angle. The face angle is the angle between the slope or the face of the dental implant and the line vertical or perpendicular on the uh, long axis of the dental implant body. In this method, we are comparing two suggested designs. One is buttress design, the other is reverse buttress design with another standard model which has been already tested and approved, which is the finithread design. Uh, the comparison is uh, ba based on two conditions, using normal occlusal load and over occlusal load. Normal occlusal load means applying a force 70 Newton with zero degree on the top of the dental implant, and the, con the other condition, which is the overloaded condition, applies 400 Newton with three degree, 30 degrees over the dental implant or over the top of the dental implant. Before we talk about the suggested designs, we'll talk about the important, one of the important terms usually find in uh, finite element analysis studies. And these are the uh, Poisson ratio and the elastic modulus. And I will focus in this study on the elastic modulus, which represents a kind of the mechanical rigidity of the material. Uh, we all know that DO implant uses titanium grade four. And the elastic modulus for titanium grade four is 100, 5,000 megapascal. You can see the clear difference between the elastic modulus of titanium grade four and the cortical bone, which is 1,360 megapascal. And finally, we have the elastic modulus of the cancellous bone, which ranges from 24.9 to 240 megapascal. Now you can see the three figures. In the left is the buttress, suggested buttress design. In the middle is the suggested reverse buttress design, which is similar to the design of, or similar in, in uh, some, some ways to the design of the dental thread of DO Implant Company and the standard model, which we have used as uh, a control for comparison. The reason for using this design, which is in the right side, and it is, it is termed as finithread design, is that not only because it has been uh, tested and approved, but it is difficult for this study to compare with other studies. So we have to have a control through which we can compare our results too. This design, which is the finithread design, as the manufacturer assumes, has the maximum advantage of the square design. In terms of, first, it has the thinnest uh, thread width. Also, it has the uh, largest thread uh, depth. In addition, the pitch between, or the distance between two adjacent threads 
is larger than other types of dental implant. And the reason for this distance, as the manufacturers assumes, is that it is related to the difference in the uh, elastic modulus between the titanium and the cortical bone. This difference uh, between the elastic modulus of the titanium grade 4 and uh, the cortical bone is relatively 9 to 1. That's why the, manu the manufacturer used this uh, ratio. So he made the uh, thread about 0.1 millimeter thickness, uh, whereas the intervening bone between two adjacent threads is about nine millimeter. So by this way, he is uh, utilizing the biomechanical feature, features of the dental implant material so that when uh, any mechanical force is applied on the dental implant, both dental implant and the bone will act as one mechanical unit. This very important aspect in the design of these two suggested uh, implants, I mean the buttress and reverse buttress. And this is the uh, reduction in the face angle. And what we mean by reduction in face angle is that the transition between the body of the dental implant and the slope or face of the thread is a gradual and smooth. So this is a gradual or smooth transition from the body of the implant toward the tip of the thread gives three advantages. First, it reduces the face angle. And by the reduction of the face angle, we are disseminating the citrus over the bone. First. Second, it reduces the shear force which will be, which is usually applied on the bone during the insertion of dental implant. Shear force, it's uh, something that we want to eliminate because, it co because of its traumatic effect on the bone at the time of insertion. And we know that more bone trauma at the time of insertion means delay in the process of healing and delay in the process of osseointegration. integration. And there is the third advantage of reducing this face angle is increasing the distance between two threads or increasing the pitch. And by this way also, we are getting more advantageous mechanical property in terms of stress distribution over the bone. This is the uh, DO implant. There are three basic design, narrow, regular, and wide. And you can see clearly uh, through the uh, cross section of the threads, the smooth transition between the body of the dental implant and the uh, thread, which is uh, of reverse buttress design. And also we can see the advantage of uh, having more uh, pitch, which is more distance between two adjacent threads. As I said, it's difficult for this study to compare its results with the other studies for two reasons. First, different studies use different dental implant thread designs. Also, they use different uh, closal load measurements. And this is one of the reasons we, may, we have many studies, but it's difficult to have a comparison between different studies also. Now, this figure refers to the citrus distribution using normal occlusal load. As you may see, there are two rows. The upper row of figures represent the citrus distribution 
over the cortical bone, whereas the lower row represents the stress distribution over the cancellous bone. And this is one of the differences between our study and other studies, because in other studies, they usually put the implant body with the uh, cortical bone and cancellous bone in one figure and discuss the results as they apply the force using finite element analysis. Whereas in this study, we have removed the body of the implant and separated between the cortical bone and cancellous bone to give the uh, reader or the viewer clearer idea about the level of stress in addition to the uh, area of stress distribution. We have in the upper row three figures from the left. The left, the figure represents the buttress design. In the middle represents the reverse buttress design. And in the left, it represents the finifred design, which is the standard controlled model. There are three gradings, color gradings, regarding the von Mises citrus, which is the term used for the citrus management, and also uh, in megapascal. The highest or the maximum von Mises stress is represented by the red color. And if you have a look, you will find that when normal occlusal load is applied on both cortical bone and cancellous bone, we'll find that the reverse buttress design has the lowest maximum von Mises stress. Of course, you will find the difference between the cortical bone and the cancellous bone. And the reason for this difference is that the cortical bone is more rigid, it's less flexible. So that's why the stress is more on the cortical bone. Not only that, uh, the cort cortical bone act as a fulcrum. When occlusal load applied on the dental implant, the, the maximum load, the maximum stress will be over the cortical bone because it acts as a fulcrum in addition to the fact that it is more rigid than the cancellous bone. The second figure represents also three models, but when more or overload occlusal citrus is applied on the dental implant. And as you may see, the same, the upper row represents the cortical bone, whereas the Row, lower row represent the cancellous bone. It is very important to mention that all these designs were successful in terms of citrus distribution. And this is related to the fact that despite the differences between these designs, they, the maximum von Mises stress, von Mises stress recorded on both cancellous bone and cortical bone is much less than the elastic modulus of cancellous and cortical bone. In another world, in another word, it is within the physiological limit of the bone. And this is very important. When you apply a force and the force is within the uh, physiological limit of the bone, this might, this will not uh, uh, only reduce the, uh, or prevent any damaging effect on the bone, but in fact, it might have uh, uh, a promotive effect or uh, useful effect on the bone in terms of bone production, because you are stimulating the bone. The physiological citrus, when it is within the limit, it might stimulate the bone formation. And contrary, if you have, to, if you have more clusal load, more than the uh, physiological limit of the bone, because if you have more than the physiological limit of the bone, will end up with bone loss and failure of the dental implant. And these three conditions, what we have is that the stress is within physiological limit, so this might, in turn, stimulate bone formation. It's true that the force 
or maximum of one mice stress in overload, in overload condition within the reverse buttress is a bit higher than the reverse buttress. But in terms of so the size of stress area, it is less on the cortical bone. And this is similar for the condition and the cancellous bone. When we examine the stress distribution using finite element analysis, we concentrate or we focus on two things. First, we concentrate on the level of von Mises stress, and also we concentrate on this area where this distribution of the stress uh, uh, is concentrated. So if we consider the area of stress distribution, we'll find that the area of stress distribution in the, vertic in the uh, reverse buttress design is less than the area of stress distribution in the buttress design. Although that the uh, fin thread design has the lowest area of uh, stress distribution, but the von Mises stress, maximum von Mises stress is higher. The final figure in this presentation gives an idea about the level of our maximum von mass stress. And as you may see, from the left, there is the maximum von mass stress in normal occlusal load. And as I have mentioned earlier, the reverse buttress design has the advantage. Then this will be followed by the level of von mass stress when there is overload force applied on a dental implant, and you can see that the reverse buttress design lies in the middle. Now the figures on the right show, show the uh, von my stress level in both normal and overload occlusal condition. And uh, to conclude from what we have seen in the previous figures and in, the, in this figure, in terms of citrus distribution and in terms of level of citrus. In terms of citrus distribution, when the normal occlusal load is applied, the reverse buttress design has the advantage. Where in case of overload distribution is applied, the reverse buttress design has the advantage of the balance benefit between the level and the stress area. So, and this is very important because we have to consider a very important fact, which is there is no particular thread design that have all the advantages. Each design has its advantage and disadvantage. But if we have a thread design that provide the suitable balance between the level of citrus and the area of citrus, this is something we consider very important and very beneficial. And I hope that I was uh, a bit of a use in giving some important information about uh, citrus distribution. And thank you for listening. This is Assistant Professor Faz Hamdani.
Thank you.